Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word, which is the truth. We receive it written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation you're bringing forth. We'll be hearers and doers of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We're sharing with you, continuing on the subject of conquering. And you must know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, God wants you to conquer in everything. Nothing to be defeated in used to be total victory. Revelation 21, verse 7, He that overcomes, which means to conquer and carry off the victory, not just once in a while, continually ongoing because it's a present tense. If you do that, you shall inherit all things, and all things are yours. All the promises have been given to us. I will be as God, and he shall be my son. Well, that means it's of a necessity that you conquer and carry out the victory, and you're well able to do it. You're to be completely victorious in every situation. Now, we've talked about a lot of areas, uh, how we conquer by always walking according to the word. This is what we've brought three messages on this. We have another message today. We're going through New Testament. But we do want to just remind you of many of the things that we said of how important this is because your walk is essential if you're going to be right with God. We see, just by remembrance, just going over these quickly, Genesis 5, 24, Enoch, which means the dedicated one, which points toward the dedicated, perfected church, is walking habitually with God. And what happened? He was not. God took him. He didn't taste death. What's that point towards? The ones who come to be the perfected, glorious church, they're going to be caught up to meet, in the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air and the rapture and not taste death, just like Enoch. We also see in Genesis 6, as we talked about, in verse 9, Noah, which means rest, pointing towards those who come into the spiritual rest prophetically by possessing the promises in your life. Well, what was necessary? He's a just righteous one. You're to be righteous by doing the word of righteousness. He came to perfection. You're going on to perfection. And he walked continually, habitually with God, ongoingly. If you will do that, Noah was protected when the judgment came. You will be protected when the judgments are poured out in the tribulation period. God will protect those who have met his conditions. We also saw that when Noah, or when Abraham was given, the promise, Abram, he's 99 years old, appeared to him and said, I'm the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And he was going to go and possess this land. Notice, he used to walk habitually before him as well. And he was to be perfect as well. If you are going to possess the promised land, you're going to walk continually in the ways of the Lord. And you are going to become perfect just as well. If you do that, as we saw in Genesis 24, verse 40, you walk in those ways. The Lord before whom I walk, if you're walking continually in His ways, then His angels will go into operation for you. He'll send His angel with thee and prosper thy way. He will prosper you, bring you to the place He has prepared for you, accomplish all the things that He purposes for you. We also saw in Genesis 48, verse 15, speaking to those who walked, Abraham and Isaac walked in the ways of the Lord, and he speaks here, Joseph, about how God which fed me all the day, all my life long unto this day. And this is the word Ra'ah, which is the covenant-keeping name of the Lord, who is our shepherd, who will meet every need and tend to everything in your life. And notice he did it all your life long. He'll do it for you too, if you walk in all of the ways of the Lord. Of course, you have to get the word in you. And this is why they were tested in Exodus chapter 4. 16 verse 4, he talks about raining the bread from heaven for you, going out and gathering a certain rate every day. Remember, the bread from heaven is he, the person of Jesus, who is the word. And so you are going to go out and you're going to gather the word in you every day. He's going to prove and test you whether you're going to walk in his, now the New Testament laws or not. The word has been given into you and he expects you to do it and walk in it and carry it out, everything that he says. We also saw that there is a way that you must walk in. It is not just whatever you feel like doing, no. We are our firstborn ones from citizens of heaven that are to walk according to heaven's ways. Exodus 18, 20. Thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and show them the way wherein they must walk. 
and the work they must do. There's a way you must walk in and there's a work you must do to carry out the service of the Lord and do the things that He has commanded you to do. We also saw in Deuteronomy chapter 11, saw many things that are important. If you haven't seen these messages, you need to watch them. Deuteronomy 11.22, if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, well, that's going to be consistency, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to cleave unto Him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and you'll possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. That means if He's going to drive out all the ites, they had to, first of all, meet the conditions of walking in all of His ways, loving Him, cleaving unto Him. Well, these all are, the ites are a type of the spiritual ites, which are all the evil spirits that are to be driven out of you. He's not going to do it unless you meet the conditions of keeping His commandments, doing them, loving the Lord, walking in all His ways, and cleaving unto Him. We also saw in Deuteronomy 23, in verse 14, where it speaks of the Lord walking in the midst of the camp. And remember, He's walking in the end time church to see who's going to be right and who's not camp is a type of the church. He comes to deliver you and to give up his enemies before you. Therefore shall thy camp, type of the church, be holy. He's commanded you and I to be holy and he will accomplish this work through his word. As you have fruits of righteousness that produces holiness. If he sees that he sees no unclean thing in thee or he sees that you're naked, meaning you haven't been clothed. If you haven't clothed yourself, that means you haven't put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you haven't put on the armor of God, you haven't put on the robe of righteousness, which is the word of God in you. And if you haven't put this on, he's going to turn away from you because you haven't walked in the ways of the Lord. We also saw another important scripture that what he will accomplish, if you will do what he says, Deuteronomy 28, 9, the Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself, as he's sworn unto thee, showing that this is a covenant statement he swore it to you. He, will, he has to perform this because he swore it himself. And of course, you have to carry it out in order to see him perform this. If they keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. That's how you will accomplish this work in you to bring you to the place of being a holy people unto himself. We also saw the ones who have been trained up in warfare. Just because you've been trained up in warfare doesn't mean you're going to pass the test. That's part of it because you have to war good warfare and conquer the enemies and fight the good fight of faith. But the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness to all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, which is the type of the world, you coming out of the bondage to the world, but they got consumed. Why? Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Obedience is mandatory. You and I, the proof of us is whether we're obedient in all things. We also saw the fact that if if we don't walk in the ways of the Lord and do exa exactly he, the way He wants, we can't do things our way. 1 Kings chapter 11, we saw the fact about Saul, the, the kingdom was rend out of the hand of Solomon. Why? Because he didn't do things according to what was right. He went, got off track. You get off track, you're going to see the kingdom taken out of your hand, which means you're not going to be a king operating in the millennial reign whatsoever. And we saw also that if you don't do things God's way, remember Saul decided that he was just going to do things his way. He was yielding to the people, as he said. He was afraid of what the people said, and he wanted to compromise for them. Well, he rejected the word of the Lord, and what happened? He got rejected from being king. If you and I don't do things God's way, we will be rejected from being a king as well. That is so important. Also, doesn't matter what situations happen in your life, God expects you to walk in all of His ways. Doesn't matter what's come down to your inheritance line. You can't say, well, I had such a bad inheritance line, that's why I haven't been able to walk right. That doesn't make it. 1 Kings 15, 3, He walked in all the sins of His Father. We don't have to walk in the sins of our Father. We can now walk in the way of the Lord and we can cast out all the demons that came in from the sins of the forefathers. And so it says, heart was not perfect. If we walk in any ways of sin, including the sins of the forefathers, our heart's not perfect. We'll never be able to go on to perfection. This is why we have to conquer sin, and we're well able to conquer all sin. And don't take the attitude, 
that, oh, it's just a light thing to walk in sins. Oh, that's what Ahab did. He thought it was a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. No big deal. No, it's a big deal. Because sin hardens your heart. Sin causes you to give place to the devils. Sin will cause you to be unrighteous and not right with him. We must walk in his ways. Another thing we saw, you can't have the walk just out when you're walking around around other people. You've got to have this walk in your house. We saw in Psalms 101 verse 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Perfect way and a perfect heart in your house. You shouldn't be any different when you're, whoever you're around, including in your house. If you're different in your house, there is something wrong. And furthermore, you should set no wicked thing before your eyes. You've got to guard yourself. Do not make the mistake of giving place to anything. I hate the work of them that turn aside. And that's what it will do. It will turn you aside from the way of the Lord. We've got to make sure we're following him. We also saw, and again, these are just some of the scriptures that are, all of them are important, but some of the things that are very important. Proverbs 28, verse 18 even tells us, Whosoever walks uprightly shall be saved. Well, that means the guy that's not walking uprightly will not be saved. God knows you by what you walk after, by your fruit, by your works, by the things that you continue on in your life. And we also saw that this way, that you're going to walk in, it is a way of holiness. Isaiah 35, verse 8, A highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over. You've got to be cleansed. And you will be cleansed to come to the place of being sanctified and holy. And this is the way for the redeemed to walk in. Only those who have been redeemed and have seen the work of God accomplished to bring them to the place of being cleansed and walk in holiness will be able to walk in this way. And as we also have brought forth many times in the past, you cannot walk after your own thoughts. Notice Isaiah 65 too, I spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walk in the way that was not good after their own thoughts. You're gonna submit your mind to the word of God and do what God says and walk in his way. His way is the right way. Otherwise, you're walking according to the human nature way, which is a great mistake. We're going to go on into the New Testament today and talk about a lot of important things as well. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. This is speaking about Elizabeth and here's Zacharias. These ones were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. This is in the Old Testament. Now, of course, it could never produce righteousness because it couldn't come until Jesus came because you have to get a brand new spirit and be born from above. Nonetheless, they walked in all the commandments ordinances in the Old Testament blameless. If they can walk in that way blameless, you and I, who are born from above and have a brand new spirit, a new heart, and we receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, we have authority and dominion over the devil and we can conquer every attack of the enemy. We don't have a sinner spirit any longer. There's no excuse for us not walking blameless in all the commandments of the Lord as we put them first place in everything we do. We see in verse 78, through the tender mercy of our Lord, wherefore the day spring from on high, that's Jesus, he's visited us, he came. And what did he come to do? To give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And this peace here, the word Irene, which really is very similar, and like shalom, which is the complete work, the total complete work. It's not just peace of mind. It is a total complete work that God bring you to what he purposes for you. Security, safety, prosperity, all of these things. He wants to bring you to the place of total victory. So he's going to guide your feet into that way because you're going to have it, walk it out step by step. Remember, the steps are ordered by God, not by you. It's as you walk in line with his ways, being obedient. Now, as you're hearing the word of God, you're going to grow and you're going to learn. And you need to be ready to always obey what the word says. And you can't get offended over the word. 
as these guys did. If there's something you don't understand, you need to keep seeking God and not let yourself get offended. Look what happened to these guys. Jesus said in verse 58, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna nor did. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. And he goes on and says, these things he said as he taught there. Well, when the disciples heard of this, they got offended. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? They, could, they were upset about this. So, of course, Jesus said, well, does this offend you? Don't get offended over the Word of God. You thank Him for giving you a revelation. You don't ignore it. You don't sweep it aside. You don't try to interpret and figure it out yourself or explain it away as some people do. No. He goes on down here. He says, it's the spirit that quickens the flesh prophets nothing. The words I speak unto their spirit and their life, and you're going to get revelation of it by spiritual revelation from the Lord. Uh, he said to some of them that didn't believe, of course. And he comes down now to verse 66, and we, here's the, what happened. From that time, many of his disciples, not just a few, they went back and walked no more with him. What a mistake after they'd seen all the things that he'd done and they heard the things that he taught. Don't ever make any mistake and get offended by anything that maybe you don't understand. You keep yourself focused. You keep thanking him for giving you revelation of the word of God and you follow the Lord always. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Meaning if you're not following him, you're in darkness. You, can't, you aren't in the light until you're doing the word. But when you have the light following him, it's going to produce the life of God, the light of life that will bring forth everything that he purposes for you in your life. We see in John chapter 12, in verse 35, Jesus said to him, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. That means that only in the measure that you have the word in you and you're walking in the light will you have revelation and really be able to see clearly. In areas where you don't have revelation, you're walking in darkness whether you understand it or not until you get revelation of the word of God and the light comes into you to open your eyes and bring you revelation of the way of the Lord. Walking consistently in the word is the key. God will bring revelation to you continually and he will lead you and guide you in the ways that are going to bring forth his blessings and everything that he purposes for you. Now another thing's important. As you're walking, you have to also be cleansed of anything that might affect you adversely. John chapter 13, verse 5. This is when Jesus began to wash the disciples' feet. He came to Simon Peter and Peter said, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And the word wash is this word nipto, you notice, which simply means wash. He answered and said, What I do thou knowest not now, but you'll know hereafter. They didn't understand because he was bringing a spiritual revelation to them of what was going to have to happen later. It wasn't talking about a natural thing. It's going to spiritual revelation. He goes on and said, Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. He didn't want him to do it. He thought that was demeaning or Jesus answered and said, look what he says, if I wash you not, you have no part with me. That means you and I have to be washed or we're not going to have any part with Jesus. It means only those who are washed are going to be right with him. You've got to be washed. Your feet, or what do your feet speak of? That's where you might walk in any ways of sin or anything that would contaminate you in any way. You've got to be washed from these things. Peter said, Lord, not only my, my, my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He said, well, do the whole thing, you know. Well, he didn't understand because the feet just speak of your walk where you might sin. The whole being doesn't need to be washed, as Jesus points out. Jesus said to him, he that is not washed, it's a critical mistake in the King James Version because it's the word luo, which means the one who has been bathed. That's different. Bathe is the whole person. He that has been bathed needs not to save to nip to wash his feet. And then he's clean. Now what's this bathing part? 
The bathing part is what happens when we get born from above. We've seen this in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, again, where we see another mistake that's critical in the King James, where it says, not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the, not the washing, it's not the word nipto, it's the word lutron, which means the bathing of regeneration, which means the new birth, the bathing of the new birth. What is the bathing of the new birth? That means the whole person has been bathed. And how does that happen? It's by the work of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit presence immersing us. And what happens? He takes the old spirit out and the new spirit comes in. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, as we pointed out, is the new birth because you get born from above and you get a brand new spirit on the inside of you. So this is talking about this washing this is the bathing, not a washing, talking about a cleansing in a sense. It is a complete bathing where you get a brand new spirit on the inside of you. So, he comes and he tells them that this is what he needs to do. And then he comes down here to verse 14. He says, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I mean, this is part of your ministry to minister to others, to help them get cleansed from the effects of sin, call them to repentance, help them to come to the Word, and also to cast out the demons from all the effects of what's come in from the sin, to help them get liberated. So we're going to help people to come to the place of walking in the way of the Lord, dealing with their sin, come to repentance, get set free, get liberated, get delivered from all the effects of the evil things that have come in. And remember, if you're not washed, you have no part with Jesus. It is mandatory. Another thing that we see in your walk is we must walk in the fear of the Lord at all times. It's brought forth in the Old Testament many times. But here in Acts 9.31, the churches had rest throughout all Judea, Galilee, Samaria, were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of this all can mean the encouragement, exhortation of the Holy Spirit. Walking in the fear of the Lord you must have the fear of the Lord, which is to hate evil. Those who have the fear of the Lord will greatly delight the commandments in the commandments of the Lord. They'll walk in His ways at all times. We're to be in the fear of the Lord all the day long, as we have seen in the past when we look at the Scriptures. We also come to another thing that's important for your walk. And remember, God knows you by your consistent walk. Romans chapter 4, verse 12 speaking about Abraham. The father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. And when it says walk here, it's a different word for walk. The normal Greek word is peripateo. This is a word stokeo, which means to go in order or to walk in an orderly manner. You and I are to walk in an orderly manner according to covenant law of the New Testament in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Therefore, this is a, a walk according to the Word of God, but it's going to be a walk in order, like a march of a soldier. You're, you're making sure you're walking in the way that the Lord has set for you, and you're not going to walk any other way. You're going to go in an orderly way, this speaks of. And of course, what was that? That was because you are going to call those things that are not being as being, we've talked about this in the past, not as though they were, it's a mistake. Again, the King James has made a tremendous number of mistakes. I'm astounded that anybody would think that the King James Version is the perfect version. <laughs> they are blinded, that's for sure. B is the present participle meaning being as it's translated. Were is error. It is also the present participle, also meaning being. This is why Young's translates it correctly. Is calling the things not being as being, meaning you speak things into being, not as though it was already done. That's given rise to the tremendous error in the Word of Faith teaching that's calling things like I'm already healed, I'm already set free, I'm already you know, liberated, I'm already prospered, and all these kind of things. Mistake. You call those things into being to bring them into being. 
the things they're not being, to bring them into being, declare what God is doing for you now. That's what releases him to do it for you now, because you're speaking it into being, because you're the one who has to speak it into being to bring it into manifestation. Against hope believed in hope. Against any confident expectancy, you always believe in the confident expectancy because the word, the scriptures, produce hope in you that he might become the father of many nations. What was the basis? Because he had that which was spoken. What's the basis for you to have hope? The word of God, the things that have been spoken and the promises that are given to you. Always believe in the scripture promises and your faith is going to bring those things into being. Amen. You cannot be weak in faith by considering the natural situation because God's promises are promises. They're not based on anything in the natural or circumstantial whatsoever. It had nothing to do with his age or with the deadness of Sarah's womb. It was the promise of God. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and building, building, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Your faith is going to bring all the promises of God into being as you speak it into being, as you maintain hope and confident expectancy as you are not moved by anything in the natural you're taking hold of the promise that's how God's doing it it's always going to be operating in the spirit and you're not going to stagger at the, at the promise of God through any unbelief and you're going to be fully persuaded that what God has promised he's able to perform and he is a performer of his word he watches over his word to perform it this walk that you have also is a walk in a new way because you are a brand new person on the inside of you when you get born from above. Romans 6, 4 speaks of like, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. This is also talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because what happened when you got baptized by the Holy Spirit? The old spirit was taken out, that's a death. A new spirit came in, which is the spirit of Christ. There was an exchange, as the word reconciliation means. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Now, this doesn't mean you're automatically going to do it. This is a subjunctive mood, which is a conditional statement in the Greek. You've got to meet the conditions that we might walk in the newness of life because you've got to put the word first place. God's not going to make you walk in it. You've got to put the word first place to walk in the newness of life. This is the new state that you're in. And what is that way? It's the way of the Spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they're life. You're going to walk according to, as a firstborn citizen of heaven, according to heaven's ways of the New Testament. This is why how anybody can go back and walk after the Old Testament ways is astounding. Jesus took away the first that he might establish the second. The old is obsolete. It's eliminated. Now, you and I are walking in the newness of life being born from above, walking after the way of the New Testament. And we see in Romans 8, 1, there's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to, after or according to the flesh, which would be the human nature, but according to the spirit. And it's not capitalized, in, should not be capitalized here. This is contrasting the flesh with the spirit. Your flesh is against your spirit, your spirit's against your flesh. It's talking about your spirit on the inside of you, which is what you got brand new when you got born from above. So you cannot walk in the way of the flesh. That's the way of sin because this salt law of sin is dwelling in your members. You're going to walk after the spirit, which is what? The word of God, the way of the spirit, according to the spirit. In fact, when it says this here, it actually... It says, according to flesh, there is no definite article before it, and according to spirit, there's no definite article before that either. So these translators have made tremendous mistakes as well by just adding whatever kind of words they want to add, which is a mistake. It's not if you walk according to human nature or you walk according to spirit which would be the spiritual way of the Word of God. They shouldn't be adding those kind of things. We come to verse 4. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to flesh, but according to spirit again. That's the way you're going to walk. And how do I walk according to spirit? You put the Word first place. 
the word is, the, is, is spirit. You're going to walk in obedience to the word of God at all times. This brings us to another thing that's important in our walk. Romans chapter 13. We see in verse 12. The night's far spent, the day's at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. All works of darkness are to be put off, put aside, put away, eliminated. Every one of them. And let us put on and duo the word for to clothe yourself for your benefit doing it. You're the one who has to do it because it's a middle voice means the subject is doing it for his benefit. Subjunctive mood means it's a conditional statement. So it's saying you are to put on and clothe yourself that you might do this, the armor of light. You have to do that. God's not going to do it for you. How that? Because you're going to put on the whole armor of God by the word of God in you. That's spiritual armor. Let us walk honestly or in a decent manner, honorably in line with the word, as in the day, not in rioting, reveling, partying, the drunkenness or any kind of intoxication. It's absolutely intoxication. You're unclean. No alcohol, no intoxication of any type. Otherwise, you're profane and unclean. Not in chambering, it's living with someone. It's astounding, Christians that are living with someone out of wedlock. What a mistake. Wantonness, unbridled lust. No, we crucify that flesh daily. We mortify the deeds of the body. Not in strife, contention, strife, debate, any of these kind of things. None of that. You never engage in that. Even in discussing things, Paul was disputing with them, not in debating. He's just giving them the Word of God and sharing the truth with them. If they don't receive it, that's their problem. I'm not going to debate with anybody. I will bring the truth to anybody, though. You're going to share the Word of God with them. Otherwise, you don't get into any strife or contention with people. And you also don't come to the place of agreeing to disagree. I will never agree to disagree with someone. I will give them the truth. If they don't want it, that's their problem. I'm not going to about agree just to be in fellowship with them. I'm not going to be in fellowship with someone who's going to be contrary to the word and walking contrary to it. No way. <laughs> That's another line doctrine that someone manufactured because they wanted to just always be in unity regardless of whether you're walking in one way and, I, and someone else is walking another way. It's all traditions of men and false, isn't it? Or an envying. This is a punitive zeal, jealousy, rivalry. No, we're not in rivalry against anybody whatsoever. Never. We should always be doing good and giving everybody what they have need of. We're not trying to get ahead of people. That's what the world does all the time. But you put on, again, en duo, clothing yourself. Middle voice means the subject's doing it for himself. But here, this time, it's not a subjunctive mood. It's an imperative mood, meaning it's a command. This is now, he's saying, you are commanded to clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you become like Him. How do I clothe myself with the Lord Jesus Christ? Through the Word in you. And if the Word is in you, that's the way you're going to be thinking. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will be speaking. You get the mind of Christ established, that's the way you're going to be thinking. So you think upon what the Word says at all times. And of course, you crucify the flesh, deny yourself, and not yield to anything other than the Word. And make not provision or forethought. You're not going to give even a thought for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Remember, the flesh has not been changed. The flesh has the law of sin in its members. It is contaminated. You can never walk after the flesh, which is the human nature way. You can only walk according to the word. And why can you do it? Because you have a new spirit. You're born from above. You're not of this world. Remember, you're born from above. You're a firstborn citizen of heaven. So we're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to walk in any other ways if you're going to walk the walk. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, there was a problem in the Corinthian church continually. They had all kinds of problems. Look what he says in verse 1. I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. They couldn't get spiritual things, but as unto carnal, fleshly as unto babes in Christ. This is the word nepi, it's like an infant, like he just got born from above. Because they didn't have the word in them. 
Until someone gets the word in them, you can't expect them to receive spiritual things. Some people try to pour spiritual truths into someone just got born again and they can't take hold of it. They're not ready for it yet. You got to feed them. You know, you don't feed steak to a baby. <laughs> you give them milk, don't you? What they can, so that they can start learning and growing up in the things of God. And so what was their problem though? I fed you with milk, not with meat. Hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. You, why? Because they didn't grow up. They weren't doing the word. That's how you grow up. He said, you're yet carnal. There's a lot of Christians out there that are still carnal because they haven't got the word in them. They haven't heard the word and done the word and walk in it. Whereas there's among you envying, same putative zeal, your rivalry, your in jealousy. You're just like what the world is out there. And strife, contention, divisions, all kinds of division and dissension and stuff. That was what was going on in the, in the Corinthian church. What a mistake. Are you not carnal? And you're walking as anthropos, which are human beings. We don't walk as human beings. We walk as who we are in Christ from heaven. You are of a spirit now and that's from heaven. You're going to walk according to heaven's ways at all times in your life. Therefore, we can't have any of this other stuff, this envy and strife or division in our life. We've got to put all that away and be a doer of the word. Another thing that's important to walk after, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 2 says, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. We're not doing any of that anymore. And then he says another thing that's important, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We're not going to walk in any kind of deception or anything that's not good or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Otherwise, they had to bring forth the word of God accurately, the manifestation of the truth. Well, that means we need to be bringing it forth to others, and we also need to have it in our own life, because if you don't have the truth in your life, you're going to be walking in the wrong way. You'll be deceived. You won't be doing the things God wants, or you'll be doing things that are contrary to the word. We cannot be handling the Word of God in a deceitful way. The root of this is talking about something which is deceitful. So, we got to make sure that we're examining everything. We're checking out the translations to see if they're translated accurately. We're going to check out the tense voice and mood of the verbs. We're going to check out everything and find out whether it is in line with the Word of God or not. That's what's important. Otherwise, you handle the Word of God deceitfully. And the scholars have handled the Word of God deceitfully because they have not examined things accurately and translated things accurately. They've added things. They've made their own interpretation. It's astounding. Some of these translations are just, this just a, it's a total interpretation of what they think the thing says. <laughs> it's not word for word according to the Scripture whatsoever. Those ones ought to be thrown out. They never should ever have been put into operation whatsoever. Well, it's, what's readable? It's readable for people, but it's not accurate. It's what you think, and it's not even the right. It's contrary to the Word. How are we going to learn things? The Holy Spirit will give you revelation, not man trying to make it in such a way that you can understand it and change it and alter it, which is what has happened. What a mistake. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. And you and I are going to walk in a way that's going to be in line with the way of faith, which is the way of the Spirit, remember. Not by sight or that which is of an outward, external, outward look. No. We're always operating in the Spirit according to the Word of God. You're not going to operate according to the ways of this world. You're in this world, but you're going to operate according to heaven's ways, which is operating according to faith, by means of faith at all times. Another thing that's important in our walk, in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, he tells us to not be unequally yoked together with, it says, unbelievers here. This is a mistake again. So why, why, how can there be so many mistakes? I, I can't tell you why they translate it this way. I can only tell you it's a mistake. How can I tell you that? Because it's the Greek word apostos. Notice below here. It is from one, which a, which means a negative, and then this is the next word. Pastos means faithful. 
It doesn't mean belief. It means faithful. So apostat means unfaithful. And they did, they, at least they put it up here, the right, correct thing, or faithless. And what it says, so this isn't just talking about people that are unbelievers. Of course, you wouldn't have any fellowship with them to begin with. That's a given. You're just going to preach the gospel to them. Look what it says. Be not unequally yoked together, which means come under an equal or different yoke, or to have fellowship with one who's not an equal. Well, they're born again, aren't they an equal? No, not if they're unfaithful. Am I going to walk with someone who's walking in sin and walking in carnality and is not faithful to do the word? No. <laughs> you know, evil companionships will corrupt good manners. It'll corrupt you. For what fellowship, and who we have fellowship with? Believers with believers, right? Has righteousness, which you're to be doing the word of righteousness, with Lawlessness. That's someone who's walking according to, contrary to the word. This is anomia, meaning lawlessness, as Young brings out. Am I going to have anything to do with someone who's walking in lawlessness? No, that's sin. That's wrong. What communion or fellowship, koinonia, has light with darkness? And Well, I thought darkness just meant someone who was, wasn't born again. No, it, it says in 1 John, it talks about the guy who walks in darkness. You know, he's... He's, and that's talking about believers can be walking in darkness. If you have hatred, you're walking in darkness, any sin. Otherwise, if they're walking in darkness, they're not walking in the light. I'm not going to have fellowship with them. What agreement, concord, has Christ with Bele or anything that's worthless or wicked? Nothing. None. What part has he that is faithful, pistos, with a unfaithful one, apostos. I'm not talking about an infidel. It's wrong. If I'm faithful, am I going to have fellowship with an unfaithful one? No. That's what it's talking about. What agreement has the temple of God, which you are, with idols? Anybody that's walking in any kind of idolatry, they could be serving money, they can be serving possessions, they can be, make themselves an idol or whatever it might be. For you're the temple of the living God, if God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. God wants to dwell in you and walk in you. I'll be their God and they shall be my people. And so what does he tell us to do? Come out from among them. Be separate, meaning to mark off from others by boundaries. Now, that doesn't mean I can't have contact. Don't think that it doesn't mean you can. You can have contact with anybody, anywhere, any place. It's talking about fellowship with them. I'm not going to be having fellowship with people that aren't walking right. Now, if I come in contact with them, I'm going to preach the gospel to them or share the truth with them if I find that they're not walking right, but they're not going to be someone I'm in fellowship with. That's a mistake. You're going to be contaminated. And touch not the unclean thing. Anything that's not cleansed, yeah, you don't want to touch it because you're going to be contaminated by it. And then he says, notice he says, and I will receive you. Therefore, we've got to come out from anything that is unclean and mark the boundaries. Otherwise, if you're going to walk right, you're going to walk holy and right in righteousness as Jesus would have you to walk. You're not going to walk with those people that aren't walking in line with the Word of God, the unfaithful ones. We see another thing that's important. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, though we walk in the flesh in the sense that we have a human physical body, we don't war after the flesh or according to the flesh. Ours is a spiritual warfare. We're, we're not fighting against people. We're not using carnal weapons against people. No. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're not of the flesh. But they're powerful through God to the pulling down of strongholds. They will conquer anything of the enemy. You're going to use spiritual weapons to conquer spiritual enemies that are arrayed against you. Another thing that we see in our walk, Galatians chapter 2, we come to verse 11. Here's a case when Paul, of course, is walking in line with the Word of God, got all this revelation. And Peter comes to Antioch, that's where Paul was. I withstood him to the face. This is Peter, the apostle. Oh, God, he's a real renowned guy, you know. 
I withstood him to faith because he was to be blamed. Otherwise, there's something wrong with this guy. I don't care what kind of notoriety he has. Don't be moved by someone's notoriety or whatever their so-called position is or whatever. For before that, certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Well, the Gospels come to the, everybody. There isn't any Jew or Gentile anymore, remember. But when they were come, as far as in the natural we're talking about, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them that were of the circumcision. But all these guys that came from, that were still in following the Old Testament law, well, he, they said, he said, I'm not going to have anything to do with these guys this time because these other guys are around. He's in compromise. He's hypocritical. That means you can't be walking one way, one minute with somebody, and then or someone else, uh, I'm going to be acting differently. Well, that makes you a hypocrite. You cannot be doing that. The other Jews dissembled likewise, and this is the word meaning to act hypocritically with him, insomuch that Barnabas, who was with, with Paul, also was carried away with their hypocrisy. You can't be hypocritical, especially if you're around someone else, you're going to be, they can, they're going to be affected by it too. You've got to take a stand. You cannot be hypocritical whatsoever. When I saw they walked not uprightly, what are you going to do? Just kind of say, well, I'll just let this slide. You know, I don't want to make any rifts here or make waves or anything. <laughs> no. When he walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, because he had acted before them all, he had to address it before them all. Not take him behind a bush and say, Peter, you know, this is out of, out of, ramp, out of order here. No. If thou be a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? <laughs> he was a compromiser, see. You cannot compromise. He's a hypocrite. If you compromise, it makes you a hypocrite. We can't be doing that whatsoever. You've got to take a stand for what is right at all times. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, talks about walking. Now, this is a problem in the King James again. When it says, the walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Remember that the Spirit and the flesh are contrary to one another. The word it's not talking about the Holy Spirit. It was capitalized by the translators erroneously. Actually, when you look at all the Greek letters, if you look at the original text, they're all in capital letters. So how are you going to know what is referring to something that would be capitalized? It's by what are the context of what it's talking about. This is not talking about the Holy Spirit. This is talking about your flesh against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to the other because you've got a brand new Spirit on the inside of you and that's been changed. When it says walk in Spirit, just to show you mistakes that these guys make and what they've done, this is the word, and, as Young's brings out, I say, as Young's brings out, and then it tells you, this is the commanding statement, walk continually. And then there is this one word there. There's no preposition in. There's no justification for translating it that way. Because if there's going to be a preposition in, it would have to be there. And it is in all the places all over the place. It's date of case. And the date of case in the Greek refers to an indirect object to something. Like, for instance, the man threw the ball to the boy. The man, subject, threw, verb, the ball, the object, direct object, to the boy. That's the indirect object. That's who it's going to. It's, it should be translated to or according to something. You and, I are to, you and I are to walk to spirit or walk according to spirit is what it's saying. It's not talking about in a realm. It's talking according to spirit, which is the word of God. You're going to walk according to spirit in line with the word of God, and then you won't fulfill the strong desires of the flesh because then it switches over and says the flesh is lusting against, a contrary to, against 
the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh. Talking about your spirit is against the flesh and your flesh is against the spirit. They are opposed or opposite against each other. So you can't do the things that you would be willing to do. So again, this is talking about you walking according to the way of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. That's what you're to walk after. Now we come down to verse 25. Here again, not good translations. Why? I'm, I'm pointing out to you why. If it says, if we live in the Spirit, that's a conditional statement, isn't it? So that means the verb would have to be a conditional verb, which would be, it'd have to be a subjunctive verb. You've heard us talk about this in the past. If you are just coming, we're explaining all this and hope you're getting a hold of it. Subjunctive mood means a conditional statement. Well, here is the word for live. It's not a subjunctive mood. It's an indicative mood. It means it's just a statement. So when this word, they translated if, when it's a subjunctive mood, it's an if, conditional. But if not, it's translated since. So what it should it be? Since we are living according to spirit, again, there's no in there. They manufactured this stuff. So you don't get things right. Since we are living according to spirit, which we are, because we have a brand new spirit now, we're living according to the word of God. May we be walking, this is a conditional statement, ongoingly, according to spirit. And when it talks about this walking, again, this is this going in order, like a march of a soldier. Otherwise, you are to order your life after spirit the way of spirit, which is the Word of God. Meaning, that's the way you're supposed to live. You are to walk, walk as a soldier in the army of the Lord, orderly, in, according to spirit, which is the way of the Word of God. That's the way you and I are to walk at all times in our life. So, this has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. This has nothing to do with, in a particular place. It's talking about how you are walking what you are walking to. That's why it's date of case indicating that it's an indirect object pointing about something too. Here we see another place, and this even shows you exactly what I've just been saying. Galatians 6.16, as many as are walking, stoico, the march of the soldier going orderly, according to, now this time they translated according to, this rule. And here it is down here, as, and as many as are walking, conducting themselves, and here is the data with the rule, or and this is a, a demonstrative pronoun, so it means this rule, this rule. But again, there's no a preposition there, because there shouldn't be a preposition there. It's talking about what you're walking to. As many as are walking, and they translate it according to, which is a good way to translate it here. It would make sense in the English. As many as are walking according to this rule, which is what? The way of the commandments, walking as a soldier, going in an orderly way according to spirit, which is according to the word. That's what it's saying. Peace be on them and mercy. Otherwise, if you're walking according to the rule of God, which is the word of God, which is the commandments of Jesus, the way of the New Testament, then you're going to see peace and mercy. And also upon, it says, the Israel of God. Who's the Israel of God? The Israel of God are those who are the Jews now. Who are Jews now? Now, if you've had the persuasion that you've been taught by some of these people out there that think much about Israel the nation, it's not talking about Israel the nation. The Israel of God is who? He is not a Jew, Romans 2, 28, who's one outward, in, outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Like when we got circumcised now, now it's, in the, it's a brand new spirit and a new heart on the inside. It says he's a Jew, which is one inwardly. God doesn't recognize anybody outwardly as a Jew, only those who are inwardly as a Jew. But why do all these Christians do what they do? Because they don't believe the Word of God, or they've ignored the Word of God, they don't even pay attention to it. This clearly tells you. Who's a Jew? One inwardly, circumcision of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, 
who is praised not of men but of God. So who's the Israel of God? All of us that are born from above. There is no now Jew or Gentile. There is no male or female, it even says. Hey, what do you mean? This is God, the way God perceives things because everything is in spirit. Remember what it says here? There's neither Jew nor Greek. There isn't one. There's neither bond nor free. There's no male or female. This is also why women are not second-class citizens who can't function in ministry. <laughs> it's all a lie. Deception. Under misunderstanding the scriptures. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. That's right. There is no separation anymore. Actually, the separation is this. Either you're in Christ Jesus or you're not. One or the other. You're either born from above or you're not. Well, we're born from above. And we're going to walk in the ways of the Word of God. So, we're going to walk according to the rule of the Word of God. That means you're putting the Word first place. You're walking in an orderly way according to God's rule, which is now the law of Christ. Remember, we're under the law of Christ. He pointed that out to these guys as well in Galatians 6, 2. Bear you one another's and so fulfill the law of Christ. Remember, it's a different law. By the way, if you've thought that, well, I thought it was an add-on to the Old Testament law. No, the Old Testament law is obsolete. Look what it says. Do we have a change in the priesthood? What was the priesthood in the Old Testament? Aaronic priesthood. Are we have the Aaronic priesthood today? No, we have the Melchizedek priesthood. It's been changed. What are you and I? A king and a priest. Because that's the Melchizedek priesthood. How about the Old Testament? You could only be a king or you could be a priest. You couldn't be both. But now we are both because we are in the Melchizedek priesthood. The priesthood being changed. Notice what else? There's made of necessity a change also of the law. Don't any, let anybody try to tell you that you're still under the Old Testament or under the dietary laws or under the Ten Commandments or under the Sabbath laws or any of that. It's all a lie. It's false. Everything now is to be understood as the revelation in the realm of the Spirit. Jesus broke the Sabbath continually. <laughs> so if he broke the Sabbath continually, <laughs> why would I have to be keeping it now? Because he was Lord of the Sabbath and he, didn't come. he came to bring the revelation of what the Sabbath, which means rest, is all about. It's you and I entering into the spiritual rest. Amen. How? By possessing the promises of God in our life. There's been a change. We don't walk according to the Old Testament law. Remember, the change has occurred. And this is such an outstanding example. Anybody tries to put, put, tell you you were still under all these things, bring them to this scripture. Let's read Matthew 5, 43. You've heard it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Where's that from? The Old Testament. Ah, or hate the enemy. Well, I guess if we're under the Old Testament, we must still hate our enemy, right? Well, what what's the next verse say? But I say unto you. What's Jesus doing when he says, but I say unto you? He's telling us the new law. He's telling us the change in the law because of the change in the covenant. Love your enemies. Oh, wait a minute. That'd be a contradiction. Can I hate my enemy and love my enemy at the same time? No. <laughs> well, there must be a change then. That's right. Anybody also tries to tell you that, that this Old Testament still is around? No, Jesus had to come. He fulfilled the old and took it away so he could establish the second. He had to get rid of the first before he could establish the second. You can't have two operate at the same time. He said, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. In order that, this is a Hena clause in Greek, in order that he might establish. Why do we say that? Because this is a subjunctive mood, conditional. We have to look at these things. The second. So, well, that means the first had to be accomplished before he could establish the second. Did he take away the first? Yep, it's done. Remember, God's presence left the Holy of Holies, the, 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 uh, the curtain over the temp in the back of the, the Holy of Holies was rent from the top to the bottom and the presence of God left the place. It's done because he was the final sacrifice and that was it. Amen. So 
and he established the second, of course, after he became a firstborn of all creation, and he became the cornerstone of the new church, which is the house of God, the spiritual house of God, and he also brought the second the new covenant into being that he made before with the Father in him, but it couldn't be ratified until after he had died, because remember, that covenant's not in any force until the guy who made it died for being an heir of it, and he had died, and then he became the first. He's the heir of all things, because he's now the heir. And you and I become joint heirs when we receive Jesus, coming into that same covenant, in that same position. Very important to understand, so you don't be deceived by any of these people, and they're out there by the multitudes in the body of Christ going back into the Old Testament astoundingly. I had someone who was here the other night and I talked to him about it. I said, well, you know, if you're doing these things and keeping the Sabbath, you put yourself back under the law. Well, you're in trouble. <laughs> I had no answer for that one. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 2. Where in time past you walked according to the age of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, that's the devil, he's still around, remember, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. That means if anybody's being disobedient, who have they yielded to? The devil, and who's operating in them? The devil is operating in them. You also had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desire or will of the flesh and the mind, were by nature the children of wrath. We can't be walking in those ways any longer. You are to crucify the flesh, and you are to submit your mind to the Word of God. You cannot walk after your own thoughts any longer. We now eliminate these things. Now we're in Christ. What will we be doing as well? We're His workmanship. He's accomplishing a work in us. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, because you are not only to see the work done in you, but also you're to do the works. The same works Jesus did, you're to be doing. God hath before ordained, or prepared beforehand, this means, that we might walk in them. Not should, but might walk in them. Conditional. You've got to carry it out. You've got to be a doer of the word to accomplish these things. God wants you to be, so what's part of what your walk is? You're going to do the works of God. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to help people come and hear the word of God, point out, you know, the way of the Lord, call them to repentance, all these things. Ephesians 4, verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, where's the bond slave? We belong to him, remember. Beseech you that you walk worthy or in a worthy manner of the calling. Vocation means the calling. Wherewith you are, you are called. You have a calling and you've got to walk according to that. Remember, many are called, few are chosen. Why are they only a few chosen? Because they didn't respond to the call. They didn't walk in it. They didn't obey this. They didn't walk worthy of the calling wherewith they were called. you got to walk in the calling of God, what He's called you to do, according to the Word and anything that He, according to any ministry gifting that might give you and the things that He tells every one of us to do. With all, and this, you got to do it in this way. Meaning, if you don't do it in this way, you're not going to pass the test. You got to do it with lowliness, no pride, meekness, gentleness. You can't be harsh and mean. You're gonna, you're not approved. Long suffering, forbearing, holding up one another in love. We operate in love at all times, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That doesn't mean compromise. That means I'm just going to stay in line with the way of the spirit. Doesn't mean you're going to compromise. We're not. We're going to stand up and speak the truth. But we're going to be holding up one another in love as we're speaking the word to them, you know. But we're going to carry out the calling of God, which is to preach the gospel and bring the truth to everybody. At the same time, verse 17, This I say, therefore, testify on the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles or nations walk, in the vanity of their mind. This means devoid of truth, Anything that's contrary to the truth or vain, you can't walk by it. This is why you've got to get the mind of Christ established in you. So you have think correctly and so you'll walk correctly. You can't be one of these ones walking like the world. If you are born from above but you still walk like the world, 
there's something wrong. You've got to be walking according to heaven's ways, walking as a firstborn from heaven, remember. Also, what do we do? We're going to walk in love. Ephesians 5, one, verse 1 says, Be therefore followers, or this is the word mimetes, which is where we get our word mimic from, or an imitator. You're to be an imitator, like mimicking of God, as dear children, and walk in love. You're to walk in love towards everybody. Never should you go outside of the way of love. Love is seeing everybody as valuable and precious and important. You're going to walk in love towards them. You're going to be long-suffering. You're not going to be, you know, doing evil things to anybody. As he's loved us, you're going to give people what they have need of, not what they deserve. You're not going to be a judgmental against them. So we're going to walk in love at all times. That is mandatory. Verse 8. You were sometimes darkness, but now you're light in the Lord, so walk as children of light. You're to be walking this way continually. This is the way that you and I are to walk. We walk in the light. How do we walk in the light? According to the word, as the children or sons of light. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. Now, what does circumspectly mean? It means exactly and accurately. Well, that also tells me i got to get things in line with how I'm walking. It means i got to know exactly what the Word says, so I am walking exactly and accurately. I can't just be walking however I think that I should walk. <laughs> you don't do that. You are walking accurately and exactly, because if you're not, he says, not as fools, that means I'd be a fool, but as wise. Who's wise? the ones that are walking exactly and accurately according to the Word of God. And when it says, see that you do this, this is actually a command to you and me. He's commanding you and me continually. You're commanded to, to be seeing that you're walking accurately and exactly. Otherwise, there's no excuse. Why aren't we? Aren't we? Because we have, if we haven't studied the Word and learned what the Word says and know what the Word says and we're just doing whatever we think, well, we haven't done what was necessary. You've got to get the Word in you first before you're going to be able to walk accurately. You know, you even see this in Ephesians where you see it kind of begins talking about sitting, seated, and then it talks about walking, and then it talks about standing. You've got to get seated so you get the Word of God in you. Sit at the feet of the Lord. And once you get the accurate Word, now you're ready to start walking and being a doer of that Word and then you come to the place, of course, to be able to stand firm because you can conquer the enemies and overcome in every situation in life. Well, this means we're going to put on the whole armor of God. And putting on the whole armor of God, we're going to become empowered within in the manifest power of His mighty force. And how do we do that? Because you and I are going to clothe our self. This is our responsibility. It's a command to you and me Middle voice means you're going to do it for yourself, for your benefit. Clothe, put on and clothe for yourself the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And one of those parts is your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So you're prepared to walk in the right steps. If you're not prepared, then you're going to walk in all kinds of ways. You might be turning right, turning left, or instead of walking the straight and narrow path. You've got to prepare and make your st st paths straight, remember, for the way of the Lord to manifest Himself for you and to use you and accomplish everything and for you to conquer and do the mighty works of the Lord. We also see over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 16. Nevertheless, if we go back for a moment, this is talking about those who are going on to perfection. Be thus minded. Nevertheless, whereunto we've already attained or we have arrived at, all the things you've learned and you've arrived at, it should be incorporated into your lifestyle. This is the way I walk. Otherwise, you don't let anything slip. You don't let anything, well, I was walking, now I forgot about that. Why not? Why? Because you didn't incorporate it into your lifestyle. Whatever you've already attained, let us walk, that same word, stokeo, as the march of a soldier going in an orderly way. You're to walk in order, orderly. 
boy, it sounds like a bunch of commands. You're right. <laughs> I thought I could do what I wanted to do. No, you're bought with a price. You're a purchased possession. You belong to him, and you're to walk in an orderly way in line with the word because you came in a covenant with him. Jesus walked in an orderly way. He did everything the Father told him to do. He did nothing of himself. So you think you can just do whatever you want? No way. You're going to walk in an orderly way. Let us walk by that same rule. Ah, the rule. Well, that's commands. That's right. All the commandments of Jesus Christ, all the sayings of Jesus Christ, the law of Christ. Let us mind the same thing. We're to have our mind set on the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them that walk so as you have an example. You know, you're certainly, if you're going to listen to anybody or look at anybody in a sense of see, seeing whether or not they're even worthy of fellowship or worthy of what they're doing, you want to find out what kind of walk do they have. If they got a compromised walk, there's something wrong. If they got things that are contrary to the truth, there's something wrong. You want to have the right example. For many walk, mm, that's trouble. That's not a few, that's many. And that's the truth. Of whom I've often told you often, now even tell you weeping, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. How come these many are enemies of the cross of Christ? Because they haven't done what they needed to do. The cross is where you put things to death. What's to be put to death? Everything of the flesh. Anything of the carnal mind. Anything that's contrary to the word. And that's what it's speaking next. Whose end is destruction. Ooh, they're not going to be saved. They're going to be destroyed. Whose God is their belly, their stomach, this is talking about. That means their flesh is running them. Whose glory is in their shame, who are minding earthly things. I thought, oh, that's not right. We're supposed to seek the things above, not the things on the earth, remember. So why are we minding earthly things? Don't get caught up in all the things that are going on in the world. Be aware of them, but where is your focus? You should be getting the word in you and walking in the ways of the Lord and preaching the gospel and reaching the people with the truth and doing the word of God, warring a good warfare, carrying out the ministry of the Lord. And why is this? Because your conversation, which means your citizenship, this comes from this word here, whoops, referring to citizen. You're a citizen, and your citizenship, as Young's brings out, it's in heaven. Where are you born from? Above. Remember, you're a foreigner, you're a sojourner, you're an ambassador to this place. What do you mean? I've been here all my life physically, but that's not where your spirit came from. You got a brand new spirit. You're not from this place. You're not of this world, remember. You're from above. So your citizenship's in heaven, so therefore I'm going to walk according to heaven's ways at all times in my life and do what the Word says. You and I, we must walk in the way of the Lord. Look what it says in Colossians 1, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to make a demand, this means ateo, that you might be filled we're to be filled with the knowledge of God, remember, filled with the precise, correct knowledge this means. That's why we got to have be able to have, have walk accurately and exactly of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What's that going to do? That you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. Well, that means I'm supposed to walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. That's right. And what's going to be evidence that you are? You're going to be fruitful in every good work. Every good work. Because all you're doing is the things that God wants you to do. You're going to be fruitful. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Why is that? Because I'm continuing in the Word and learning and getting revelation and learning more and more and more, increasing. Strengthened or made strong with power, dunamis. Why is that? Because I'm in the Word. I'm putting on the whole armor of God. I'm getting the Word in me. I'm getting full of power and might. And I'm operating in authority and power according to the the power, manifest power of His glory, more literally, unto all patience, which is steadfastness, and that's of the soul, because my mind's getting established, because in your soul, you are steadfast, and it's to be, you possess your soul when you're steadfast on the Word. 
and long-suffering in spirit in the face of circumstances and having to deal with things in this world with joyfulness, always having joyfulness, always rejoicing in the Lord, always maintaining that joy, not letting myself get apart from joy or peace. You're to have this at all times in your life. Colossians 2, verse 6. As you've therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, which we did, then what? Well, you should be walking in Him continually. That's the way we're supposed to be walking. This is a command to you and me. It's not an option. If you're walking in Him, you're doing the Word. You're doing what He says. You're walking in His ways. You're obeying Him in all things. That's what He expects. Rooted and build up in Him, established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding therein in thanksgiving. That's how you walk with Him. You're going to operate in faith as you've been taught because you're going to be taught the Word and you're abounding here in thanksgiving. You're continually thanking Him. Why? Because I'm thanking Him as I've taken hold of every promise. All the promises have given to me. Remember, we thank, whenever we pray, we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus and with thanksgiving we make a demand to what's due us of the promises already given to us and take hold of them and speak them into being and hold fast our confession until they come into manifestation. We don't pray to try to see, tell God our problem. That's worthless prayer. He already knows what you have needed before you ask or make a demand of what's due you. You pray the scripture promise and take hold of the promise in order to see him accomplish what he purposes for you. That's why you're abounding in thanksgiving. Have you been abounding in thanksgiving this week? Has thanksgiving coming out of you all the time? What do you mean? <laughs> I thought I was only supposed to thank him when everything was already given to me. No, that's backwards. You thank him to take hold of it. With thanksgiving, you make your prayers, remember? Because you're taking hold of all the promises. Why am I doing it with thanksgiving? Because they've already been given to you. If you already gave me something, what am I going to do? Am I going to ask you to give it to me again? No. I'm going to say, thank you as I come to take hold of it. That's what you're doing. God's already given you everything. And you're to take hold of every promise and see it come into manifestation. God wants us to walk worthy of Him in everything that we do. We'll look at a couple more scriptures before we stop. 1 Thessalonians. You've got to also understand you're to walk worthy of Him, that you would walk worthy of God, who's called you into His kingdom and glory. Did Saul walk worthy of God? No, he got the kingdom taken away from him. Did Solomon walk worthy of God? No, he got it torn away from him because he went in idolatry and didn't walk right. You've got to walk worthy of God. Who's called you? That doesn't mean it's automatic. He's calling you into, onto his kingdom, ongoingly. Well, if he's calling me ongoingly, that means I must not be seeing this manifest that I'm going to be in that state unless I obey what's necessary, which is walking worthy of God. Is somebody going to see the kingdom and the glory of God manifested if they don't walk worthy of God? No way. It's part of the call of God, remember. Because you're going to walk worthy of God. You're going to walk in a suitable manner. You're going to walk in all of His ways and obey Him. And we'll look at one last ones. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 and 2. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, as you received of us, how you must walk, or as how it's necessary for you to walk. This is also translated must 58 times of the 106 uses. How it's necessary and how you must walk and please God. Oh, that changes it. That means I'm not just trying my best. I must walk and please God. So you would abound more and more, increase more and more and more and more and more as you grow up in the things of God. That's where we're headed. And you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, because you might ask the question, well, how do I must walk and please God and abound? Ah, there he tells us all the commandments. You know all the commandments. That's what you're to walk in after and please God, because you order your life after the way of the Lord, the rule of God. You walk in an orderly way. 
you're doing exactly what he says. You put the word of God first place. That is what God wants. As you and I walk in the ways of the Lord, God's going to accomplish his great work. And that is absolutely imperative because he knows us according to our walk. And remember, the reason why Enoch was taken is because he walked with God. The reason why Noah was the only one and his family that escaped the destruction and the judgment is because he was righteous, he was perfect, and he walked with God. And that's where you and I are coming to. We're going to have the walk. We're going to see the complete work of God accomplished in us. We're going on to perfection. We'll be righteous. We're going to do his works. We're going to walk according to the word and and fulfill the calling of God for the kingdom and the, and the glory of God to be manifest. We're going to walk and please Him in every way because we're going to obey His commandments. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank You and praise You for the Word of God that brings directions and commands of how we are to walk. I will be walking in all the commandments of Jesus Christ. I will walk in the fear of the Lord. I will walk in faith. I will walk according to spirit, according to the word of God. I will walk uprightly. I will never compromise or be shown to be hypocritical. I will only walk in fellowship with faithful ones who are walking in line with the word. Otherwise, I set the boundaries, I mark those boundaries, and I do not touch the unclean thing. I will only walk in obedience to the word. I will walk in love. I will walk in good works. I will fulfill the calling of God. I will walk accurately and exactly according to the word of God. I will walk according to the rule of the commandments of the New Testament. I will always walk according to what God's word says. I will not allow myself to walk after my own thoughts. I will submit my mind to the Word of God and I will get the knowledge of God so I have the mind of Christ established in me so I will think on what the Word says. I will obey and walk in line the Word of God walking worthy before Him evidenced by I'll be fruitful in every good work. I'll be increasing the knowledge of God. I'll be strengthened with all power. I will be seeing the manifestation of the power of His glory. I'll be steadfast in soul, long-suffering in spirit. I'll maintain joyfulness. And I will walk as I have attained in an orderly way. I will not be minding earthly things. I will not let my belly be my God. I will walk in line with the Word of God and do what is right in your sight. I will walk worthy of you who's called me to the kingdom and to the glory. And I will walk and please you by walking in line with the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you that as I walk in all your ways, I will see your promises come to pass. I will go on to perfection I will be in the rapture and I will be protected during the time of the tribulation. I thank you that as I walk in your ways and please you, you will accomplish your great work in my life. So I am set myself. I am only walking in the way of the word of God all the days of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. Thank you that we'll be hearers and doers of this word. Thank you for this great work accomplished in each one of us so that we are really truly having the walk because you know us by what we're walking after continually. Thank you for accomplishing the, everything that you've promised, everything that you've said, because we obey and we carry out this walk in obedience to the word as hearers and doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen.